Here Father Pierre is again on Wednesday of the fourth Lenten week. I hope we have all managed to put a little flesh on our skeletons, a little less rattling of bones as we become more active in the Lord's draft second vineyard. Let us pray. Father, fill our hearts with the light of your gospel, the good news which on Ash Wednesday you called us to believe. Your word, Jesus Christ, through his actions, brought this gospel to life. May your spirit teach us to follow Jesus' example, not only during this season of action, but all the days of living here in this your world. Amen. So be it, and so will it be. In the 24th chapter of Exodus, we hear the people of Israel loudly, clearly, and enthusiastically proclaim all the words which the Lord has spoken, we will do. They promised action. They would do the word of God. The Israelites were about to enter an entirely new time slot. It was an entirely new season for them. But we all know that eventually their enthusiasm began to wane. Somehow or other, coming to grips with the daily demands of this new season managed to diminish their enthusiasm. Now, in this fourth week, our enthusiasm may not be as fervent as it was at the start. Perhaps we are experiencing a touch of being isolated in some small wilderness. Well, if we look at the opening verse of Matthew's version of the Gospel, we should recognize that Jesus used the wilderness experience to prepare himself for his season of action. In the 17th verse, we read, From that day Jesus began to proclaim the message, and almost immediately he commenced doing things, the first being the calling of his first disciples. These midway Lenten days are often difficult. However, take courage. As General Mandy Hopkins tells us, there always lives the freshness of deep down things. Today's first reading, the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 8 to 15, provides further encouragement. At the very start, we hear, at the favorable time, I will answer you, I will help you. And some verses later, we are told that if we think we are in a wilderness and that the Lord has abandoned me, forgotten me, then the Lord answers, I will never forget you. Today's Gospel, the fifth chapter of John, verses 17 to 30, provides us with a powerful challenge and strong motivation. Jesus reminds us in this section of the Gospel that the Father goes on working and so do I. He ends by saying, My aim is to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Hear and listen carefully to all those words about doing and working. For Jesus, it was a constant season of action. So, return to putting flesh on the skeleton. I am all at once what Christ is, since he was what I am. In the face of any sort of Lenten depression, never forget, one, what the Lord has said. I will answer you, I will help you, I will never forget you. And secondly, dear glowworms, 
believed in yourself, there always lives the freshness of deep down things. And so, glow worm, glow light on a grass blade. Let us pray. God of all power, be here among us. Light in the midst of us, bring us to life. We believe you will never take away your hand, never forget or abandon us, and always help us. And so we call on you. Amen. So be it, and so will it be.